We know you don't got no money. <laughs> and we know you want to travel. So here's how to do it. I'm going to a place for I want to see you any more. I want to touch that shore, yeah. I want to tell that story. Traveling sisterhood. Traveling sisterhood. Come take a trip with us. Traveling sisterhood, yeah, yeah. Hey y'all, welcome back to our channel. Today we're filming a video on some travel tips on how to travel on a budget. Yeah, so we are a travel channel here on YouTube. If you're interested in seeing our vlogs where we've traveled from to Bali, to Singapore, to St. Martin, subscribe to our channel to look at those. Okay, so we're gonna get started. We have our list here, we're at our table. We're being serious being business. today. And I mean, I just wanna say, if you are young, broke, and wanna see the world, like us, listen to these tips. Yes. So we have 14 tips today, and we have an extra one at the end of the video. If you want to get paid to travel, stick around to the end of that video to find out how you can do that. Okay, so tip number one is to use websites like Hopper, Expedia, or Kayak. I personally love Expedia. If you make an account, every time you book something, you get points. Sometimes those points help you get cheaper deals on hotels or flights. And it's a really easy way to save. And Hopper, that website, it predicts flights for you. So if you know that you wanna go to Grenada from July 7th to July 10th, and you're in January, it's gonna tell you like oh wait don't book yet in february on this day you could book or in march is going to be the cheapest it predicts when the flight is going to be the cheapest so that way you can book then right so i really like hopper because like she said it does predict the flights but also hopper can be a little bit weird if you try to book your flight directly from hopper so how i normally use it is i put in like she said i want to go to grenada for christmas on Hopper and it'll tell me, um, so wait a month or right now is the best flight and it's going to go up in like two weeks mm -hmm. and then I'll go on Expedia, see that same flight and from that I know, okay, this is the cheapest one I'm going to get. I'll go on Expedia, like she said, you can get those points and just book it from there because Hopper can be a bit confusing when you're trying to book from that site itself. Yeah, so Kayak is a good website to book hotel deals and stuff from, but for the most part we use Hopper and Expedia so if you see that the flight is going to be cheaper on this date through Hopper, then go to Expedia and book it on that date right. and get that price. Right. And all of these are apps that you can also have on your phone. Yeah. Right. So tip number two is to use incognito mode um, when you are searching for flights. Because I don't know if you noticed, but if you search, if you're not in incognito mode, which is basically private browsing on your laptop, mm -hmm. you can, once you start looking for flights, everything becomes more expensive. Every ad that you see on Facebook, Instagram is to book a flight to go to that specific, specific location. So what I normally do is I put my browser on private mode and I will search for my flights that way. That way it's not keeping up with your history and what you're doing. So it's not, um, inflating the prices. So we'll have a little screen here that basically shows you the couple of steps that you have to do. Um, if you are browsing through Google, how to put your browser in incognito mode. Yeah. Okay. So tip number three, is to fly on a Tuesday. The myth is if you leave on a Tuesday, that'll be the cheapest day. But in general, if you book flights to leave on a weekday, instead of, if you wanna go somewhere for a weekend, it's better to do like a Wednesday to Monday or something like that than leaving. Like I'm gonna leave Friday and come back Monday because flights over the weekend are always more expensive. So if you book to leave during the weekday, it'll most likely be cheaper. And if you use a site like Expedia, I'll show you on the screen. When you look through the drop down, it'll tell you day by day what, how much the price is gonna be, so you can select the cheapest days, and that's usually leaving and coming back during the week. Okay guys, so the fourth tip is to book in advance. So kind of when you book earlier, you may get better deals. So you just wanna know if you are looking to go away for even next summer or some people wanna travel for carnival, you wanna book those early so you can get better deals and trying to book early in combination with using Hopper, you're definitely going to get the best deals. Yeah. So if you know you wanna fly, 
um, if you want to know if you want to go away for spring break, if you know you want to go away for Christmas, if you know you want to go away for the summertime, yeah. um, go on Hopper, put in your dates that you're thinking of. It will tell you about around the best time to book your flight, and that way you can kind of get early deals. Yeah. So tip number five is to take local buses or trains or transport when you're there. Uber doesn't always work in other countries and the taxis there, if they know you're from America or you're not from wherever they're from, they're gonna try to jip you on their prices. So we're not telling you to go into the bushes and take a random bus right. to Be town. Careful. Be careful. But there are places, like I've taken a train when I went to Italy to get to certain places. When I was in China, I've taken a train or the bus certain routes. There's certain places where the local transportation is reliable and it will be cheaper than taking a bus or taking an Uber or something like that or a taxi. So don't be afraid to like take local buses and stuff. Especially if you're with your friends. Yeah, if you're in a group, especially like they can't take all of y'all down. So don't be afraid to do it. <laughs> Okay, so our next tip is that um, try using Airbnbs. Mm -hmm. We've stayed at Airbnbs a number of times. They're great experiences, as great as our experiences in hotels. Um, so Airbnbs, like if you want to cook your own food, some of them have chefs if you want to do that. Mm -hmm. But if you do want to save and if hotels are maybe too expensive, try looking at Airbnbs as well. Yeah. And you can probably get a good deal in a place where maybe you're just going to have fun and maybe, I yeah. mean, a lot of times we only eat once a day depending on what type of trip yeah, that is. Yeah, because for the most part, if you're going on vacation, if you know you're doing excursions every single day or you're going to be out the hotel every day, you're paying for the experience of a hotel when you're not even going to be there. So you might as well just stay in a nice Airbnb if all you're doing is like sleeping there and hanging out a little bit during the day. You're gone most of the day anyways. There's a lot of luxury Airbnbs. So it's worth it to stay in an Airbnb if it'll be cheaper. Right. Yeah. So the next tip is to fly with a carry-on. This might be, it's difficult for us. <laughs> it's going to be hard for a lot of people, but... The time to not have to pay for a checked bag is sometimes worth it because the checked bag, I think it's like $50. And depending on how much you really want to save to fly with just a carry-on, it's worth it. You have to learn how to pack light. You can have your carry-on and then you can have like a little personal bag too. So you can put some stuff in there too. But if you can fly with just a carry-on, especially if you're doing just a short trip, it's not worth to have to pay for a checked bag if you're only going for a couple of days. Right. So get yeah. your tote bag and your, your carry-on. Yeah, your little rolly luggage and do that. And pack light. <laughs> hey, you. Did you subscribe to our channel yet? That little red button on there? You need to click it. It's, it's free. free. It's free. It's so, free. girl, you ain't coming out your pocket no money. So, please, just hit the subscribe button if you're watching this. Hit the like button if you've liked our tips so far. And stay tuned for more. Yeah. Bye. So our next tip is to travel in the off season. So off season can be break down into like different categories. So it would have to be like weather, um, holidays, and academic schedule. So with weather, if you know you're going to like say the Caribbean, a hot destination, maybe you want to go there in the winter time and not the summertime where everyone is off from school and just mm -hmm. looking to go on a beach. Travel there in the winter time, and it's nice to just get away in the winter time. So you can think of that. Um, the holidays, you know, if you're traveling during Christmas and Thanksgiving, it's going to be very expensive. So maybe you want to travel that's not close to a holiday. That's something to think about. Mm -hmm. um, and another one is academic season. So you know when the kids are off from school, parents are going to use that time to take them on a vacation. So you don't, and even for us, like spring break time mm -hmm. and when college is off, that's going to be another season where prices are high. So... If you can get the time off from work, if you can, you know, take those two days that you get off from college that you can miss your classes and try and book a location before it's spring break or before it's Thanksgiving break and times like that, traveling the off season can save you some money as well. Yeah. So the next tip is to not buy souvenirs. You don't use them. No one uses them. You're going to get a magnet for somebody's fridge. Their fridge is stainless steel. They can't even <laughs> use the magnet. Like, I can't think of how many souvenirs people have given me. And then I keep it for like a year or two, and then I'm cleaning out my room. I'm like, okay, this is garbage. What am I going to do with it? 
like unless it's like a shot glass or something that you can really use just take a lot of pictures take videos you'll have memories that way and i know your grandma is like oh what you bring me back from cancun like what do you want <laughs> you can't people especially if it's not meaningful people can't use it don't buy souvenirs it ends up being a waste of your money it takes up space in the carry-on that you tried to pack and now you're gonna have to check <laughs> it so don't buy souvenirs yes create those memories let google photos remind you once a year when you yeah. traveled and things like that but try to limit if you have to you could get grandma a little bracelet something that she will use but yeah. try to get away from every place you go you have to bring back something that you don't even use yeah. um so you'll save a lot of money that way so our next tip is to do all inclusives. Mm -hmm. Now I'm an all inclusive kind of girl. Yeah, there's I, no other way to do yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> I mean we we stayed at luxury Airbnbs. We've loved it. Um, those that we did, some of them had chefs. Others, I think everyone we went to, they would cook for you if you wanted it. But I love all inclusive. My yeah. drinks, my food, and you don't have to worry about it. It's expenses that are kind of booked into your travel. Mm -hmm. So you know if you're booking booking an all inclusive hotel. You know you have food and drinks and you don't have to worry about that so try and book all-inclusive hotels to kind of take out that extra expense when you get there yeah and I know that some people look at it when they're booking it when they're first booking it all-inclusive seems so much more expensive but if you actually stay at a hotel and then you have to pay for breakfast lunch and dinner and you drink all day by the pool this that, and the third like it's worth it to book the all-inclusive and I forgot about this tip, but to piggyback, if when you're booking your hotel, you should also book some excursions online just because when you're getting there, the money is already spent, it's already taken care of, you have less to worry about when you're there. So if you book through Expedia and stuff like that, after you book your hotel, they usually recommend excursions that your hotel will have. Some of them are worth waiting for because you might get a deal when you're there. But if you just want to get all the expenses out the way, you can book that. Yeah, that, that really helps if you're within a budget. Like yeah. if you know I have $2,000 max that I want to book for a trip and everything up front, you know I paid for my all-inclusive hotel so I don't have to worry about food and drinks and I booked two excursions and we're not doing anything outside of this unless it fits within the money I go with. Um, so it help, it's helpful that way. Yeah. So the next tip is if you can, stay with loved ones. Most of us were from the Caribbean. If you Google, stay by your cool auntie house so you don't have to pay for like a hotel or Airbnb. And most of the times, if you like your family, you know, they'll take you around. You'll yeah. have a ride. You won't have to pay for taxis and stuff. And it's just like a cheap place to stay. All you have to worry about is like food and drinks. And yeah. So our next tip is to pre-book airport transport and that kind of piggybacks off of our last tip where basically when you know you have a budget and you book everything up front then it, it's easier for you. It fits into your budget mm -hmm. and it is what it is. Um, so you pre-book your airport transport. That's also I think safer. Um, a lot mm -hmm. of times when you travel and you get to the airport you have to get to your hotel so a lot of times they're going to give you the price that they want you to pay and you can ask someone else but it's they may all be saying like a, a higher price than what your hotel would probably mm -hmm. estimate that it is to get from there to the hotel. Um, so if you can book it on Expedia is another website that yeah. kind of bundles that in. So if you can book your airport transport to and from, I would do that because it's one less thing to worry about to kind of um, set up a cab because your airport, your hotel most of the time is setting that up for you yeah i think expedia does that and if you book with cheap caribbean they also frequently have that option to do that too right. yeah so the next tip is to spend cash it helps you keep track of your money what I usually do is if I'm going on vacation, I bring a thousand dollars cash with me. Was she balling? I, I have rarely <laughs> ever spend the full thousand, but I take out a thousand dollars in cash, and I would have like three hundred dollars in like solid hundred dollar bills. And I know like if I get to those hundred dollar bills, I'm wilding. Like, <laughs> I did too much, but take out a couple singles to like tip people. Take out twenties, like smaller bills, so that people can accept it. But when you go with your cash, you keep track of how much money you're spending. You can take out $200 from your stash and be like, this is all I'm spending today. When I go out, if I run out of that money, that's it. But if you're using your credit card everywhere you go, first of all, you're more likely to get scammed. Somebody's going to swipe them numbers because why wouldn't they? But 
And you don't, you just swipe and swipe and swipe and you come home just like, I spent $5,000 in Mexico. How did that happen? And like, also your credit cards can charge you an extra fee for yeah. using abroad. So. And if you don't bring any cash and then your car gets declined, what you want to do? So travel with cash and spend your cash. It helps you t keep track of how much money you're spending mm -hmm. and you can stay within your budget. Right. And I like the feeling, I don't ever go with $1,000, but I like the feeling of being like, okay, I came with seven, I'm going to put 200 aside and I get to go home with a little cash. I feel like yeah. I did something. That so our last tip is to compare one-way tickets. Now, I must admit, I feel like a lot of the times when I compare with one-way tickets, it's it's more worth it to just book a round trip ticket but it doesn't hurt to see okay if i'm going to jamaica on these dates how much would it be if i fly one way and then if i'm coming back on this date then check that just check both and see if it's like if it's worth it to book it separately yeah i think booking one-way tickets works out best when you're going for a really long time like say you're going somewhere for a month Booking one way might be like, oh, I'll book for this date and I'm not coming back for a month later. You book the date separately, then it usually works out. But if you're only going for a week, sometimes it's worth to do it round trip. But if you're going for a longer time, it's worth looking into booking one way. Okay, I agree. Okay. So we've reached the ends of our tips on how yes. to travel on a budget if you're we young and broke. You yes, drop down in the comments. Us. Drop it down in the comments below if you've ever done any of these things um, and it's helped you find cheaper um, cheaper trips. Or if you have any extra tips, drop it down in the comments yeah, for the people sure, below. But now we're going to give that extra tip we were talking Don't about it. on how to get paid to travel. Yes. Basically, make some money while you travel. So ebate it's renamed it's called rakuten now we're gonna have a link in the comment section we're gonna pin that comment so that you could click that link what it's a cash back website it's not a scam because we use it all the time and you can use it for bloomingdale Saks, any website you can think of most websites amazon sometimes like you could get cash back for anywhere that you regularly shop but expedia is on Ebates. So you book that thousand dollar flight to Bali, you can get 10% cash back on that flight. You can, yeah, Expedia, the old, the hotels deal, you can get the cash back through Ebates when you book with Expedia. And I think maybe Kayak and some other, maybe Cheap Caribbean too is on Ebates. So I'll let you know. But yeah, so you get cash back for your flights that you book. If you book your hotel through Expedia, you get cash back that way. And why not get your cash back? Exactly. And they send it yeah. to you in a check, in the yeah. mail, and we use it for everything. Like, I mm. literally just used it on JCPenney's website the other day. Yeah. So, you can use this for travel, which is great. And you could also use it for when you shop online, too. So, that is our bonus tip. And there's a little swindle, too. If you know you have your Ebates account... And you travel a lot, so people come to you and be like, oh, can you book this flight for me? <laughs> She's always the blah, one. Blah, blah, like, yeah, yeah, I'm booking for you. Use your Ebates and get your cash back on their flights, too. Because when we went to St. Martin with, like, 40 of our family members, I booked, like, 10 people tickets. And I got my cash back <laughs> on all their tickets. It's not a lot. It's usually you're not going to get, like, $500 back. You're not going to get $200 back. But cash back is cash back. Right. So it's worth doing it. So check that. So this is the end of our video. Like the comment if you like. Like the comment, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Like the video if you like the video. Have you subscribed yet? Cause what you doing? At this point, if you still watching this and you haven't subscribed, you're a hater. I'm sorry. She said it. I had to. She said it. Period. <laughs> <laughs> Travelling sister, yeah, yeah.